أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد أما بعد فقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ذكر علي إبادة صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد سلام عليكم يا علي مدد Tonight, as we know, is the Shab of the 21st of Ramadan. So, by the end of tonight's lecture, we will be having the Masaib of the 21st of Ramadan. But before that, tonight, I have chosen to recite and to discuss about a very important subject, more of an important topic, which is not just important for our young youth, this subject is very important for, in general, all Asadars from all around the world. Tonight, we will discuss about forgiveness. Now, I know when we first hear the word forgiveness, we can be confused, but we will talk about forgiveness with the quotes and with, we will talk about forgiveness using the help of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. We will see the importance of forgiveness. We will see the advantage of forgiving someone and the disadvantage of not forgiving someone when it comes to Allah. So before we begin, please recite aloud salabat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Our fourth Imam, Imam Zainul Abidin, says, Forgive each other's mistakes. So on the day of judgment, Allah forgives your mistakes. Human beings give usually attitude towards one another when someone does something to another person. It is human nature and sometimes we give attitude to somebody when they make a mistake. We give them attitude, we will err them, we can be rude to them and we make mistakes but the wronged one should cultivate a broad heart of forgiveness. This means, what does this mean? We need to forgive these people. Instead of me giving someone attitude, I should go and forgive them. It is okay. And not give that person attitude. Because you should forgive people just like you want Allah to forgive you on the day of judgment. There is an old saying that says, when you give attitude to somebody when they make a mistake, that it's human. But when you forgive someone for making that same mistake, that is divine. We should remember that we should never tell our believer brothers that I will never forgive you and I hope you get punished in your grave and snakes eat your grave. We should never say things like this. It is unacceptable to tell another person, I will never forgive you and I hope you get punished in your grave and I hope the snakes punish you in your grave. That is unacceptable. If somebody says menaces and things like these, then he should not expect forgiveness from himself, from Allah on the day of judgment. If there is somebody telling someone, I'll never forgive you, I hope you get punished in your grave, then that person should not expect Allah to forgive him on the day of judgment because you should forgive people just like you want Allah to forgive you on the day of judgment. Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad, have always and always showed kindness and forgiveness even to their own and biggest enemies. And let me give you a small example. At the time when the Abbasid government came into power, their first job was to go for a manhunt against the Umayyads. Manhunt means when you go and you try to capture someone. So when the Abbasids came into power, their goal was to have a manhunt to chase down the Umayyads. One day, a grandson of Imam Zainul Abidin, our fourth Imam, a grandson of our fourth Imam, Muhammad bin Zaid. He says, I saw a person near the Holy Kaaba. That person was holding the curtain, wailing and crying while holding the curtain of the Holy Kaaba. 
Muhammad bin Zaid says, I approached the person and asked the reason for his restlessness. I said, why are you crying so much? What is going on? The person replied and says, I am the son of Hasham bin Abdul Malik. The person who was crying at the Kaaba looked at Muhammad bin Zaid and said, I am the grandson of Hasham bin Abdul Malik who is right now being chased down by the soldier of the ruling regime, referring to the Abbasids. He says all the door of Masjid al-Haram are securely, are securely guarded. There are guards at every door and he says every person is being checked over there so there's no way I can leave because when I will leave they will capture me and they will execute me. This is what the son of Hasham bin Abdul Malik was saying to Muhammad bin Zaid. Muhammad bin Zaid was aware that Hasham and his accursed family were the biggest enemies of our Prophet's family and of the Ahlul Bayt. Matter of fact, Hasham was the killer of Imam Zainul Abidin. Even though Muhammad bin Zaid did the number one thing and it was to forgive. Muhammad bin Zaid helped. The number one thing he did, he helped that man to come out of Masjid al-Haram. He, he made him dress, he covered his face and when he was leaving he said, Oh no, this person right here is my slave. And the guards on Masjid al-Haram, the Abbasids, they did not care really much and they said, Okay, you can go. And that is how Muhammad bin Zaid saved the life of the son of Hasham bin Abdul Malik, even though Hasham bin Abdul Malik was the killer of Imam Zainul Abidin. And when the son of Hasham bin Abdul Malik looked at Muhammad bin Zaid and said, I'm not sure you recognized me. Because if you recognized me, you would never forgive me. And matter of fact, you would punish me. But Muhammad bin Zaid said, No, don't say that. I know who you are. I know that your father is responsible for the killing of Imam Zain al Abidin. But remember, we even help our enemies. This is what Muhammad bin Zaid said to the son of Hasham bin Abdul Malik. On the other hand, I just gave you a waqia on how Muhammad bin Zaid forgive, for helped the killer, no, helped the son of the killer of Imam Zain al Abidin not to be executed because there was a manhunt against the Umayyads. But on the other hand, in today's world, we have people who get easily angry. You make a small mistake, they get way too angry. They make a big deal out of it. Anger is normal. But to not forgive, that's human. The old saying that I said in the beginning of this lecture is, there's a note saying that says, when someone does not forgive someone, we call that human nature. But if you forgive someone for the same mistake, that is divine. In today's world, everyone in general, we can get mad very easily and we immediately jump into the conclusion, we will not forgive you, which is completely unacceptable. We have now, we are now used to us speaking lies and speaking lies for those who don't know, it could be a reason that your du'as are not being accepted, your supplications are not being granted. A true Muslim is someone who will always and always prefer peace over argument and will always initiate peace. And when we talk about peace, the number one quality inside, forgiveness. Peace cannot start without everyone forgiving one another. Because forgiveness is important to initiate peace. If we have some hatred towards someone in our heart, then we are speaking lies in our namaz. Because in our namaz we say, Assalamu alayna wa la ibadillahi salihin. Assalamu alayna wa la ibadillahi salihin. This means that we are declaring peace to everyone. But if in our hearts we have hatred for someone else, then this then we are speaking lie in our namaz by saying we are initiating peace to everyone. Imam Ali, our first Imam, Imam Ali said, on the day of judgment, the heaviest burden will be on the person who you have not forgiven. How nice, how peaceful would it be if everyone in the community, everyone had one day, or not even one day, if everyone in the community learn how to forgive one another. 
and not only forgive for your own good benefit, but to understand why you need to learn how to forgive. Because yes, forgive someone like you want Allah to forgive you. But remember, without forgiveness, you cannot initiate peace. And we know that a true Muslim is someone who will always prefer peace over argument. And you can't just jump into peace and expect it to happen that is not going with human nature you need to begin peace in order to begin peace you need understanding and what comes with understanding forgiving one another and when you forgive somebody it shouldn't be a big deal oh my lord i just forgave you no forgiveness should be something more and more uh active and should be something that we do more and more because remember to initiate peace we always need forgiveness so how amazing would it be to have a forgiveness day where everyone forgives one another and then this will be this will be good benefits for us because if we forgive someone it can help our supplications to be granted it can help our do us to be granted and that is the importance of forgiveness. With forgiveness, there's always peace. And when we do this, this will help our supplications to be accepted. Now, before we move on to the Messiah, please recite two loud salabat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. My respected Azadar, as we know, Tonight is the Shab of the 21st of Ramadan. The day, tonight is the Shab of the martyrdom of Imam Ali, the first Imam. Before we move on and we talk about in detail what happened on the 20th and 21st of Ramadan, let's discuss what happened on the 18th and 19th of Ramadan. On the 18th of Ramadan, during the time of Iftar, Bibi Umm Kulsum, the youngest daughter of Imam Ali, invited Imam Ali at her house for iftar. She was just like any daughter would be happy to host iftar for her father because she was really excited for her father to come eat iftar at her house with her. At the time of iftar, Bibi Umm Kulsum brought some food, some items for her father to break his fast with. She brought some dates, water, milk, and bread. When Imam Ali saw this amount of food and items, he said, no, just give me one item and I will break my fast. Bibi Umm Kulsum was like every daughter. She cared about Imam Ali. She cared about her father because Imam Ali had been fasting and had been becoming, becoming weak. So unlike any daughter, she took the water away. She gave Imam Ali milk. But Imam Ali said, no, don't give me milk. Just give me water. And then Imam Ali opened his fast with water and some salt. My Azadar, I am not telling you this because I want you to realize that Imam Ali would not eat a lot. The point is, Imam Ali was the governor of Kufa. Imam Ali was the governor of Kufa. And just examine and just look how much of an extreme simple diet Imam Ali had. Just a little bit of water and a little bit of salt to open his fast. And this is what makes Imam Ali one of the best role models of our universe. On the 19th of Ramadan, during the prayer of Fajr, during the second sajda, Ibn Muljim, he took a heavy stroke with his poison sword, inflicting a deep wound in the heads of Imam Ali, my respected Azadar. Tonight is the night of the 21st of Ramadan. Tonight is the Shab of the 21st of Ramadan. Tonight is a night that breaks the heart of Rasulullah. On the 19th of Ramadan, during the prayer of Fajr, during the second sajda, Ibn Muljim took a heavy stroke with his poisoned sword, inflicted a deep wound on the head of Imam Ali. All the companions of Imam Ali and all the sons of Imam Ali, they came running to help their father. Imam Hassan held the head of his father. All his sons, everyone, they began crying and began doing matam. Imam Hassan, he saw that his 
father's head was injured, severely injured, and was cut into pieces and was severely bleeding. His father was in extreme pain, but Imam Ali forgot about his pain. Imam Ali said, Hassan, I don't want the prayer of mourning to be kaza. Hassan, go lead the prayer. Oh, Hassan, go lead the prayer of Fudge. My Azadar, don't just look, Imam. Don't just think that Imam Hassan went and led the prayer. My Azadar, on one side, Imam Hassan is leading the prayer. On the other, his injured father, who has an inflicted wound on his head, his head is almost torn into two pieces. He is in extreme pain is on the other side. My Azada, we should take this moment. Think about how hard can it be for Imam Hassan to go and lead the prayer while his father is on the other side, injured and in severe pain. But Imam Ali, he forgot about his pain. He said, Hassan, go lead the prayer before it becomes kaza. After finishing the prayer, all the sons of Imam Ali, they came to help their father. Mola Ali said, bring me to my house. Jibra'il has informed my daughters about my injuries. They are worried. Oh, my sons, bring me to my house. As they were bringing Imam Ali to the house, the companions of Imam Ali, the companions were following Imam Ali, running, crying, doing my um, but as Imam Ali approached the house, he says, Hassan, oh my son, he says, Hassan, go tell the companions, go back to the masjid. Hassan, when I enter my house, my daughters will see me in this condition and they will cry loudly. Hassan, I do not want the cries of my daughters to go in the ears of the Mahram. This was what Imam Ali had told Imam Hassan. So Imam Hassan went and told the companions, go back. My father will not go inside the house we have many hadiths that are narrated from Imam Ali that contain his advice to his children, regards of his funeral, the way of burial, the reeds, the ablution, shroud, and performing the prayer over his body. He also asked Imam Hassan, he also asked Imam Hussein, refrain from mutilating Ibn Muljim. Imam says, do not mutilate the body of Ibn Muljim. Imam said strike him only once Imam said loosen his cuffs remember Imam Ali is saying that for his own killer Imam Ali is showing great mercy Imam Ali is showing great justice towards his own killer he says strike him only once if he survives let him go and do not shred the blood of the other Muslims referring to the tribe of Ibn Muljim and do do not shed their blood under the banner that Imam Ali had been murdered. You can see the amount of justice. Not only Imam Ali had mercy for his own killer, he showed justice to the tribe of his own killer. And he said, do not shed the blood of the other Muslims, referring to the tribe of Ibn Muljim, because he says, do not do it under the banner that Imam Ali had been murdered. Moreover, Imam Ali emphasized in his final words on paying attention to the Quran, praying, commanding good and forbidding evil, jihad, visiting the house of Allah as well as fearing Allah, being organized, reconciliation, and of course caring for the orphans and the neighbor. Then a doctor arrived. The doctor arrived, he examinated Imam Ali and the doctor said, the poison is so strong, if the poison would be given to the public, it would wipe out the population of Kufa. The doctor said the poison is extremely strong and if this poison was given out to the public, the entire population of Kufa would vanish in an instant. But the doctor said, in order to ease the pain, milk bring him milk and in order to ease the pain milk would help Imam Ali to ease the pain 
when this word that milk can help Imam Ali ease the pain spreads around Kufa, the orphans of Kufa arrived, the orphans of Kufa, the children who used to play with Imam Ali, the children and the orphans Imam Ali took care of, they arrived with their bowls of milk and they wanted to give it to Imam Ali to help Imam Ali ease with the pain. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon Razan bi qazai tasliman li amri Ma tamay Hussain ya Hussain ya Hussain ya Hussain